the $72,000, $73,000 range with bodies holding as support. It has to do that. If it doesn't, it's going to roll. Hello everyone, short-term holders seem to be turning bullish on Bitcoin as Q4 2024 begins, despite concerns that October is not off to a flying start. Over the past seven days, short-term holders realized capitalization has jumped by $6 billion. In this video, master trader Steve Courtney shares a new key chart pattern of Bitcoin. Subscribe now, hit that bell icon, and embark on an enriching journey toward financial success. Let's unlock the potential of these markets together and pave the way for a brighter financial future. Welcome aboard. On the Bitcoin US dollar index and today we are on the weekly chart. Now we typically cover the Gaussian channel on the five day chart because it gives us some foreshadowing of what's coming a little bit faster than the seven day chart is. However, the seven day chart is fascinating and I need to show you this discovery. We're going to do this study and really hone in on what it looks like when Bitcoin has an explosion out of the Gaussian channel and then it comes back down towards the Gaussian channel. It typically always Always sees a bounce and this is where people get excited and they say you know what this quicksand thing I'm not believing it we're seeing a big bounce that's what they said in 2021 when I brought up the Gaussian channel they said look we bounced off of it we're not going into quicksand it is not gonna happen then we went into quicksand for a couple hundred days we also covered the Gaussian channel sitting right here in this chair in 2019 when we bounced off of it 40 percent and everyone's like see I told you we're not going into quicksand then we rolled over for a couple hundred days in quicksand. They said the same thing back in 2018. They got really excited that this bounce here was a new all-time high in the making. It was not. It was a failed rally. It rolled over. So when you start to dig into it, we need to understand what is happening right now because clear as day, you can see this candle back in August, early August, bounced off of this Gaussian channel with a relatively large wick. And then we came back down to the Gaussian channel again in early September, one month later, with not so heavy of a wick showing more signs of weakness. And we've seen a bounce, a typical bounce, 35%. It falls kind of in range of where we have been before. But let's dig into it a little bit further because we want to know. Is it possible that Bitcoin could roll over and what are those warning signs looking like? And could it be possible that we are more in line with this data point where we bounced off the Gaussian channel and we didn't look back and we had an explosive rally, one of the most explosive ones in history? Let's start our journey back in 2014 and study where we were and what happened. Well, in 2014, things were a little bit different. We had a huge rally. We weren't even close to the Gaussian channel for the entirety of the rally. And we had this explosive top up to this 1,200. And then we had a pretty horrific crash, right? This was not a crash of 25, 30%, which we've seen from our recent top of 74. This was a really horrific crash down. And when we crashed down, we came right down to the Gaussian channel on the seven day and saw a pretty big bounce. The key is market structure. We did bounce. We bounced 104%. A lot of people were very excited but it didn't break our market structure, didn't take out that prior swing high, which is why I keep talking about that 71, 72 area. Bitcoin has to take out that swing high of July or it's simply going to be a double top trend reversal. It's plain and simple, right? This is exactly what happened. We rallied, yes, we rallied 100%. Great, it rallied up to that prior swing high, it did not get above it. So it was just a double top trend reversal. And then we entered the quicksand and it was a mess for a couple hundred days. Now we go to our next rally and let's discover what happened then, right? Bitcoin, again, explosive rally, nowhere near the Gaussian channel, came up to here, came crashing down in an explosive manner. It wasn't a crash down like we see today, 35%. This is huge. And we came down where? To the Gaussian channel. And then what did we do? We bounced like we do every time. This bounce was pretty big, right? You can see a 55% bounce, but what 
didn't it do? It didn't take out its prior swing high. Its prior swing high was up here at about just below 12K. So we rallied, we rallied 55%. It's a big rally. It got people very excited, but we didn't take out our prior swing high. We didn't even get close. So what was it? It was a failed rally. What happens in a failed rally? We turn over and we take out our prior swing low and we go even lower. This is what I've been telling you time and time again. If Bitcoin doesn't get above that 71, 72 area, that's what will happen. This game is a really simple game if you understand the charts. So then 2019 came rolling around and everyone's like, ha ha, this time is different. That's what they always say. This time's different, Steve. We're not going to fall into quicksand. There's no way. Well, we, we rallied up. We came crashing down. And what did we do when we got near the Gaussian channel on the seven day? We bounced just like we do every time. It bounced 40%. What didn't it do? It didn't take out its prior swing high. So what was it? It was a failed rally. What happens in failed rallies? It takes out the prior swing low and goes even lower. It's a really simple game. That's what it did again, too. It came here and it bounced even higher, but it didn't take out its prior swing high. It was a double top trend reversal and it plummeted. It's just textbook, plain and simple market structure right before your eyes. Everybody goes through every day. Oh my God, Bitcoin's up, Bitcoin's down, Bitcoin's up, Bitcoin's down. Later today, they're stressed. They're looking at their portfolio time and time again, looking, looking, looking. Just look at the damn market structure. Stop looking at the day-to-day. -day. The day-to-day -day will never tell you what I just told you here. Never. These are a few months time period looking at facts, not the day-to-day. -day. So when you look at that, it's just plain market structure, right? When you look at the next one, what happened? We came really explosive rally to the upside. We came crashing down to where? We came crashing down to the Gaussian channel. What happened when we got there? We had a huge bounce. Surprise, surprise. That's what happens every time. We had a huge bounce. And what happened here was just a technical double top. It was a technical, once we got up into this zone, we couldn't confirm it with any bodies of the candle. We wicked up into there. We did not have any bodies confirm above this wick, this prior swing high. So we didn't take out that swing high. If we had bodies close above that swing high as support, it would be a different story. Bitcoin would have rallied a lot higher. It didn't. It was a double top. We could not take out that prior swing high. So what happened? We rolled over and we took out our prior swing low, which is, again, simple 101 market structure, right? And then we did it again. We had this huge rally here, but we couldn't take out our prior swing high. So what did we do? We rolled over and we took out our prior swing low. It's a really simple game, right? So what has Bitcoin done since it rallied up to that 74 area? where we clearly have had trouble since 74. That's not up for debate. And we called the top at 74. We said that the crash was coming. We didn't say, oh my God, the top was in. That's not confirmed as the top yet. There's no charts that are indicating this was the top. That was what we call an interim top. It's in the midst of a bull. It was an interim top. There was trouble coming. And since then, we've been creating lower highs and lower lows. Not up for debate. What Bitcoin is in the midst of is we've seen a bounce from here. Great. It's a 35% bounce. What Bitcoin has to do, it's got to take out this prior swing high. It's got to get up into the $72,000, $73,000 range with bodies holding as support. It has to do that. If it doesn't, it's going to roll over and take out its prior swing low and go even lower. That's just the facts, right? These are how the charts work. I need to present this to you. Now, what we're saying about could it be possible that we could see something like this? where it's the one time in history we came down to the Gaussian channel and we skyrocketed to the moon. What is the likelihood that this could happen? This comes down to facts in the charts. When we came down here back in October of 2010, and again, everybody wants to talk about October, October, October. We're about to get into this October area and live in this area. And, you know, everybody says October is the time. There's a huge difference about this market structure and what we see happening now. This market structure, we didn't continuously make lower highs and lower lows, and we had a huge wick, and only one candle came down and touched this, right? And it was a huge wick, which 
by definition, you know, means that we've got huge momentum to the upside. We didn't have multiple candles and lower lows, taking out lower highs, et cetera, et cetera. We had one singular candle with a huge wick to the downside, which means one thing and one thing only, big momentum to the upside. So is it possible that we could see that today? It's very unlikely because we've got multiple candles down here. We did have a wick, but nowhere near that one. And we've been continuously making lower, lower highs. The only way Bitcoin could start to turn the corner and potentially have a larger rally to the upside, we've got to take out our prior swing high. It just is that simple. Thank you for watching the interview highlights of Steve Courtney. If you enjoyed this highlight video, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.